Today I want to look at some reserves work we did on a gas well in Texas and I'd like to present the analysis we did, the results, and then we want to go back and look back and see how the well turned out. So let's, uh, let's get right into some data. We're going to be discussing some reserves analysis and look back from Lavaca Bay field area in Texas. Here's the study area, the well, the study areas along the Gulf Coast. And the original work was done in 2013. Here's an expanded uh, map. The uh, project area is in Calhoun County, about 100 miles southwest of Houston. All right, here's a blow up of the field area. It's the Lavaca, Lavaca Bay field. Here's some of the wells that we've labeled and some of the ones that we're going to be looking at. That's the first well we're going to be looking at. Uh, here's another well that we're going to show some information. And we're going to show a type log on this well to the south. But the well that we're going to be evaluating is the 3905 in the F46 sand. It is a producing well. All right, here's the type log from the well to the south. It is a one inch log. It's a correlation log, we call this. And the reason we call it a one inch log is because on the paper copy of the log, it takes one inch to equal 100 feet of depth. And we call this type of field having multiple stacked pays because you have reservoirs all stacked up and down the hole. But the one we're going to be working on is the F46. All right, here's the producing well that we want to do reserves on. This is a production plot, gas, oil, and condensate yield versus time semi-log plot with the monthly production in, on the solid lines and the test data as points out into 2013. All right, so the well is not really showing a decline right here, so it really be hard to do decline curve analysis reserves. So how are we going to calculate reserves? We don't really have a lot of pressure data. So I would say that the first chance and most likely way would be to try a volumetric calculation. All right, so it's the 3905 well. And we were provided with this rough structure map of the subject reservoir from the client's geologist. Subject well is down here to the southern fall block. And it came on production in 2012 and the time of the study was at the end of March and we had some test data. It was still producing very well with good pressure at that time. Now the well to the north is an important well. It was drilled to a deeper reservoir but it did uh, did have some DSTs in this subject reservoir. It shows that the pressure had not been depleted by the well to the south. So this would indicate that this fault right here is sealing between the two wells and our subject well should be only draining this much of reserves which is about 50 acres. All right here's the five inch log on the subject well with the perforations marked in red. And it is a detailed five inch log and that's because on the paper copy of the log it takes five inches to cover a hundred feet of depth. And we have a gamma ray Right here, it doesn't really have a lot of good contrast, kind of poor. We have resistivity curves here, and then we have the porosity curves here. So to do volumetrics, we need to estimate how much, how thick this reservoir is. All right, so the F36 is correlated way up here by the geologist, but our perfs are way down here, so we're gonna have to try to analyze this and see how we're gonna, how we're gonna estimate the thickness. All right, first step is to add a cutoff line at about 19% porosity. So anything to the left of this line would be high porosity and could be productive reservoir. Anything to the right would be considered tight. All right, so what's going on up here? Is this part of the reservoir that we need to include? You know, well, it looks like it's kind of tight, so we're not gonna include that. This part looks like it's wet, so we're not gonna include that. This part looks like made as a little gas on water. So that really, you couldn't really have gas on water right in the same reservoir as gas. So we're not really gonna count that. That might be a little string of that separated. All right, so what we wanna do is estimate the pay of the subject reservoir. And we, we do it in 10 foot intervals. So these black lines 
mark 10 feet of depth and we estimate about three feet of pay in this part. And on this 10 foot, we have about eight feet of pay. So some of it is shaley. On this 10 foot interval, we estimate about five feet of pay right here. Down here, it's got some porosity with some resistivity, but we're really not sure about that. The resistivity is not that good and it appears to be separated by this tight streak right here. So we're not gonna count that. So our first pass is we think there's about 10, 16 feet of net pay thickness in this well for the subject reservoir. All right, so let's look at the well to the north. Maybe it can tell us a little bit about how thick the reservoir is in the general area. You know, is it, is it varying a lot? Because we estimated 16 feet in the other well. All right, so this is the offset well to the north, and it appears to have better sand development. You can see that some contrast on the gamma ray here. The resistivity seems to be a little better. You can see it looks like gas pay. So if we put, uh, here's the prosy, if we put the prosy cut off in red and we kind of estimate the pay, you know, maybe in this 10 foot you have five feet of pay, six, maybe six, five, and we're, we're not going to count that. So anyway, this looks like maybe about 22 feet of pay. So it's a little thicker, so it gives us some comfort that maybe the reservoir is about 16, 20 feet thick in the study area. All right, so let's go ahead and try our volumetric. So we need thickness and area. All right, so here's our notes from the project. Our subject well is down here in the red circle. Here's a little tracing of the structure map that the geology, geologist provided. And we have to estimate all the reservoir properties. We're going to, we're going to assume the 16 feet of net pay is good. We know the mud weight and the pre we can estimate pressure, porosity, water saturation, all the stuff we need to calculate volumetrics. And we also do check the scale on this map and make sure this appears to be about 50 acres. So that's correct. So now we know the area and we have some of the reservoir properties. So we plug all these into our volumetric program but we have to estimate the abandonment pressure. So we, that's our best estimate. It is abnormally pressured. Um, it does calculate a pretty high recovery factor using this depletion drive method of 78%. But I want to note that when we did this calculation as a first pass, we just used 45 condensate yield. But that's not what we booked as reserves. All right, so we know the area is 50 times 16 feet of pay. That's about 800 acre feet, so that's our volume. And the gas in place is about 2 BCF and recoverable of 1.5 BCF. And like I said, we didn't use these condensate reserves. So our best estimate from volumetrics is about 1536 mmCF for this reservoir, the subject reservoir. All right, so here's the producing well with our projection. We only had monthly data through here, so we went ahead and did a projection, and we did a two-step projection because the well wasn't really declining that much. So let's just kind of go over how we did that. That's the gas, that's the oil, this is the condensate yield. So it started out at about 80 and it was down to about 68 at the end of the data. So we projected it to go down. So how did we come up with this projection? Okay, so we have volumetrics but you, that tells us how much gas is there, but we need to project a, a rate profile to get economics. We have to know how this rate is gonna change over time to do the value of the reserves, because we're, we're gonna run economics on these reserves. So we have to have a rate prof profile, here's our estimate. But how do we come up with that? You know, the well wasn't really declining that much, maybe 10%, you know, initially, but we have the volumetric estimate and we had the condensate estimate. We, we, we estimated 60. That was, that was our best estimate, that the average over the life would be 60. So we fitted the decline period through the existing data with about a 15% decline. Then we know that towards the end of the life, the well will decline faster as it reached its line pressure of 48%. So we had about a 15%. It was kind of arbitrary where we stopped that. And then we did a 48%. And and that was forced to make it fit the reserves that we had estimated volumetrically here at the bottom. So we kind of fit a profile, a best guess, of how that well is going to perform with the volumetric estimates. 
All right, so let's see how we did. How has the well performed since 2013? All right, here's the actual production data with our projection. So our gas projection really wasn't that bad. It's somewhat close. Now the well is off production, so we know it's ultimate recovery. It's because it's finished producing. So we had estimated 1536 ultimate gas, but the well actually was a little better. But for the condensate, we were a little, we came in under the estimate of 92,000 barrels because the average yield was 46, more in line with our original volumetric estimate than what we went with for the reserve booking. So how did we do? So on the gas volumes, we predicted 1536, the actual is 1629, so we underpredicted by about 6%. On the condensate, we predicted 92, actual was 75, so we overpredicted the condensate reserves by 18%. So that's for EUR volumes. Let's look at the reserve volumes, like what was remaining as of the date of this study. How did we do on reserves? And the reserves were as of 4113. So the predicted reserves was not but 954 but the actual was a little better so we were we under predicted the gas reserves by 10 percent but on the condensate we predicted 50,000 barrels of condensate and we only produced 33 so we over predicted the condensate reserves by 34 percent because we overestimated the average condensate yield so Overall, we did pretty good, but it's always good to go back and look and see how the well performed. So I hope this was informative, and uh, if you have any comments about how we did it or you have any questions or if you would have done it differently, please let us know, and uh, thanks for watching.